Welcome to the worst nightmare of all. Reality. Explore the lesser-known stories of our unknown world. Join the pursuit of the paranormal with Ash and Greg. Hey, Ash. How we doing? Good. Very, very well. How are you, Gregory? Yeah, good. <laughs> good. It's been just coming off of the back of a bank holiday weekend. Another one. It's been loads I know. of holidays I, recently. It's the last one till August now. I think we're going to wait till August. Good, yeah. good, good, good. But it's... um. It's half term as well, so people in like, a, and the weather's nice. So yeah, very so, busy. How how's it been going? You guys went uh, sky watching at the we, weekend. Let's cover that off quickly. Yeah, we did. We went to the sunny seaside sauna of South Porch. I think it's something else we're going to be best just to make it sound nice. Uh, yeah, sunny seaside town of South Port. Very very hot day. Yeah, felt the day very clear skies, clear skies held, which is good. There's like barely any clouds all night. That's yeah, a good. Few, few new people joining us. Nice, which was good. They weren't the best prepared for the cold, but it was yeah, it was good. We only really saw one thing, which was a bit weird at first, just because it's still daylight because sun doesn't set till about half nine. We were out there. Yeah, it's mad at the moment. Isn't it? It's more like half nine, ten o'clock. So it's still quite light. And it's just as bright light came up like above the sea yeah and it it looked like it looked like it was moving um obviously we're not too far from Liverpool airport and stuff and blackpool airport so we had a quick look nothing in the area that was in that sort of height anywhere near in that direction um so we checked these star apps and stuff and there's nothing that was saying it'd be visible there wasn't any planets or bright stars and where that was yeah so we had a few uh binoculars and stuff with us so we have to look at it look like it had like a halo around it like a bit of a blue mist around it so it was a little bit interesting and then i still thinking it's not moved more people saying it's moving but i'm thinking it's not moving and then it's still in the same place but about 10 minutes i hadn't moved so i'm like if it's not moved it's not a plane it's more likely to be a planet or something but it's still yeah. quite daytime ish so I go back on the star app and for some reason the time has set itself to like twelve o'clock at night oh. it's only like nine or half nine so when I set the time to pop usually it just goes off your phone time it's just this yeah, it is does. how it is now for some reason yeah. it's gone to twelve o'clock at night um, and it's showing me the sky as if it would be twelve o'clock that night not half nine as it is now so when I put it in for half nine it was Venus oh. it directly directly there and Venus is actually one of the the planets that mistaken gets mistaken a lot for a lot. The queen of UFOs. It's funny because one of the guys that came that was new, he was sort of asking about like our work and stuff and what gets reported. And I said like, obviously, lots of things identified, and Venus gets identified a lot as a UFO. And then literally, fifteen minutes later, we all look at this thing I'm like it's not a plane, <laughs> it's not a planet, it's not a star. It's, don't know what this is. <laughs> it was in the end. Being necessary, just goes to show. It's, you know, it's still daylight. It's still quite visible. It's the only thing that was visible at the time. Yeah. Uh, so it's interesting, but it was good to show the people there. So sort of the process we go through in seeing something and then looking at different options and ruling things out. And but my fault because my rocky area I've been the wrong time set on the app for some reason. But it's good to that you then checked again. Mm. Yeah, because I've been there a while. It's like. It's still in one place. When something's in one place for a long time, hmm. then it's usually something celestial. Yeah, yeah. Uh, celestial. So, yeah, I thought, just double check. And then they got abs to check on hers, and then, yeah, it was. It's actually a really good point that if it's there for long enough, chances are it's something. So I've seen on UFO pages and people saying, oh, like putting a picture up and people going, well, it's, it's Venus. And people go, no, it was there for ages. And it's like, yeah, it is. Yeah, so it I went is. two hours and later it, and it's still there. It's like, yeah, it will be. Yeah, it moved slightly. It's like, oh, planets do that. <laughs> Stars do that. The only one that doesn't is Polaris. 
Yes. And I North have North. Polaris just outside my bedroom, so I can... Exactly the same. So when I'm laying in bed, when I've got the curtains <laughs> open, because like my bedroom window has like two walls either side of it, yeah. outwards, we're like in like a tunnel type thing. Yeah. So the block of sky is out of our window. Polaris is there. And so lying in bed, I can see it every night. Always, always cool. there. And it's just like, I like, I can just find my bearings like in the sky quite quickly. Mm. Go, ah, there's Polaris. And I've even done the time lapse photographs. So it just does the whirl round, just so I prove to myself that I've got the, <laughs> got the North Star. So yeah, an interesting one though. Interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that, that, that was good then. So although nothing major happened, it was, it was actually a good to show, like you say, the process to new people and yeah. making sure everybody's following the same steps. Because if you do all of those and you're still not sure, that's that's when it starts to become a bit more interesting, isn't it? Yeah, and you're also showing how things do look different. Like even I was like at first, like it has got a, like a aura around it and it looks blue and these things. But then that is because then as I explain to the people there, like that's just skin elation from coming through the layers of atmosphere and yeah. gives things different appearances, make it look like because planets don't twinkle but stars twinkle. Correct. That's because it's coming through different layers of atmosphere and the light basically. And so that's why it looks different. That's why it can look like it's changing colours or getting bigger or moving. Just because the light is coming through thick <laughs> layers yeah. of, of atmosphere that's above our planet. That's why it looks different. So you know it doesn't look like a star or a planet. Like it is an app. Always go to your app. Yeah. Yeah, I can tell you. If you've got the right time set. <laughs> and the good thing is with the apps, uh, I know we talk about apps on the podcast, but the, the celestial apps are brilliant. Because so I've used it for with the telescope. You just literally hold it up in the sky and you can, it'll tell you where to find planets or constellations, or you could just point it at the thing and it'll say it's Venus. Yeah. And even like better is the guy we were with, he showed me a video. He said, oh, the video I've got, I saw in February, that could have been Venus now, thinking about now you told me all this. I was like, you send me, like, go on the settings and tell me the time and date that it was recorded. You can just put that in the app and go back and look what the stars were like weeks ago, months ago, and then see what stars will look like to rule it out or yeah. identify it as that. And the most, like, the weirdest thing is that we can predict where the stars are going to be. We can predict where the planets are going to be for thousands of years in the future, and we can see what it was like thousands of years back. So that that's one really good thing about the uniformity of the, uh, the, the solar system is that people know exactly when things are going to happen, which is weird. But... Yeah, even like... Even like moving things it's like oh yeah this is comet we'll see it in 57 years two weeks it will then become visible in this part of the sky it's like fuck you know it's insane isn't it the maths oh, there. I mean, obviously we computers nowadays but yeah even in the past it would have been all done by maths and the brain which is crazy it is it is so a successful weekend then really that was despite was. not seeing anything <laughs> it was it was fun it's always good just to get out yeah the stars it's nice weather um, clear sky, sat having a talk about UFOs for a few hours nice. after after drinking the pubs. Yeah. <laughs> I did see the pre pre drinks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, always. So nice. So we are going to move on to a subject that we haven't really spoken about before. No, nope, I don't think this different to what we're talking about now. Completely different to UFOs. But yeah. equally just as mysterious. Um, like we, we've we spoken about all sorts of subjects, cryptids, UAPs, ghosts, poltergeists, everything that's not, doesn't massively impact humans directly. I know we, we've spoken to people about abduction cases, UFO abductions, which obviously, yes, that does. But this particular mysterious sort of unexplained phenomena is one that used to petrify me as a child. I used to read it in books and flick the page over or 
as as you all know, if you if you listen to podcasts, I used to watch Arthur C. Clarke's World of Strange Mysteries, and back then they done an episode that covered this particular phenomena. I also watched QED, which is an old program, like a documentary type program. Do you remember uh, on BBC Two? There's a program called Horizons, and it was like they would just okay. <laughs> So they would talk about a subject, basically, for the hour. It would be like a, not a documentary as such, but like a, kind of like a news program where they'd explain stuff. And it was interesting, like a science-y type thing. Um, And this particular episode covered off and tested this particular phenomena. So we're going to talk about spontaneous human combustion. Scary. It is. And when you talk to people about spontaneous human combustion, people know what it is. And it, but it's not something that anybody really talks about. I know um, we, we spoke off air that one of the friends of the show, Michaela, she'd done an episode on spontaneous human combustion just over a year ago. I, did, I didn't even know that. So I need to go back. Apologies, Michaela. I will go back and li- listen to that. That's the but, Paranormal on What podcast. Correct. Yeah. Well worth a listen. Definitely check it out. Um, and yeah, it, it's it's a subject that's always been quite fringe in the unexplained phenomena for definite. Up there with the cases of like stigmata and just weird stuff that happens but nobody really knows why. Although everybody's got theory, there are theories about all of this, and we'll cover those off. But it's one phenomena, the way, when you look up the definition, and this is something I did um, whilst researching, so it, according to Wikipedia, of course, spontaneous human combustion is a pseudoscientific concept of the spontaneous combustion of a living or recently deceased human body without an apparent external source of ignition. In addition to reported cases, descriptions of the alleged phenomenon appear in literature and both types have been observed to share common characteristics in terms of circumstances and the remains of the victims. So... Essentially, people just apparently burst into flames, and yeah, it's either it's recently dead, which I didn't know about that bit, but or currently living, and just it's, burst. It's one of them things where you sort of asked a random person, like sort of, oh, what do you think about spontaneous human combustion? They'll like say they know about it, um, and it's probably one of them where. You, you you can kind of just believe it, like it's one of those. Oh yeah, people people just burst into flames. It's not like oh, I need proof. Where's the picture? But it's like oh yeah, yeah. It's just one of the things that that happens. Like when I went, like like say as a kid, what looking in paranormal stuff. Who used to have a DVD? Well, a CD series on the computer, and it was like all different topics. And one of the CDs was like mysterious world or whatever, and this was in it. And like the, the sort of the pictures that everyone probably would have seen um, is in there. And it is like to be like nine, whatever, 10 years old, seeing these pictures and reading that it was randomly burst into flames. Uh, and it kind of sticks with you then. That, oh yeah, that, that, it does. That, that, that's a thing that we like, that can just happen. Like it is scary. To, it to is. Think. And like you say, the pictures, the pictures are pretty horrific as well. They've always seemed to be black and white photos. And the weird thing about spontaneous human combustion, if, you, if you've not heard of it or really looked into it, is that essentially it tends to be like a chair in a living room that appears to have had a bonfire go up in it and there's like a leg or an ankle <laughs> with a foot just you know, at the bottom. Or hands or something. And that's it. No, no sort of further evidence of a fire. The rest of the room seems to be okay and not really have major damage. And it's the person's not there anymore. It it does seem really weird. And you only have to Google 
spontaneous human combustion. And the photos, you'd be, it would just flash you back to when you were a child looking at these pictures. You go, holy shit, I remember these pictures. And I remember why it freaked me out. Because like you say, the thought of just randomly bursting into flames is pretty, pretty horrific. And you, but there was never any kind of like a, a like a, an urban legend going around when I was little or younger to say, oh, did you hear about such and such? They burst into flames. It, like uh, you've got people go, oh, I saw this ghost or whatever stuff like that. And people going, yeah, that house is haunted. There was never a story of anybody going, Mr. Smith down the road, only fucking burst into flames, didn't he? There was nothing. But there was, there's always like a story of a haunted house or there's ghosts in a house or that's where somebody saw an alien or a UFO or do you know, when you're growing up. There's always a, a kind of don't go in there or, or don't say Candyman three times in a mirror or just those kind of weird, like, urban legend folklore type things but there was never shit don't go in that house that's where they burst into flames you're actually on like a facebook group today like oh did anyone hear anyone see the fire engines that, that down this road someone's put yeah yeah he burst into flames <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's as funny as it is it's actually really horrific mm. so i I have listened to podcasts over the years, and I listened to a guy called Larry Arnold, who in 1985, sorry, 1995, wrote a book called A Blaze about spontaneous human combustion. And I recently heard him, probably last year, last summer, talking on a podcast, How It Use podcast, and he actually says, not spontaneous human combustion, it's spontaneous human cremation. Okay. Because it essentially cremates the body like mm. a cremation would. I suppose combustion sounds a bit like, not an explosion, but because I have like a combustion engine, it's the petrol lighting yeah. against the thingy or whatever. I suppose you yeah, combustion. I, mean, I suppose both. Yeah. Do you think? You, don't, you never hear of any sort of survivors either. Of well, There are survivors. Oh, there is. Yeah. We oh, can God. come on to them a little bit I look later. forward to, to that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the the whole thing around it is, is just weird, as I mentioned. Um, there was some medical professors um, and people have looked into, even the British medical journey looked into it in 1938. Um and they they believe that some of the the main characteristics are evident based on the the deaths at that point, and that the victims are chronic alcoholics, the usually elderly females. The body has not burnt spontaneously, but some lighted substance has come into contact with it. Uh, hands and feet are usually fallen off, hence why oh, they're fallen off. <laughs> Uh, and the fire has caused very little damage to combustible things in contact with the body, and that the combustion of the body has left a residue of grease uh, and fetid ashes, uh, which have been very offensive in odour. So they they claimed that based on all of that, that it, it's people, um, alcoholics that smoked primarily, that... Um, essentially their own candle and that they're smoking they might fall asleep whilst drunk and the whole thing goes up and because it's in the middle of their body that's where the majority of the damage is but it's kind of weird because not all of the cases involve people who even drink or smoke so that kind of rules that that bit out but Essentially, they've been classed as like a human wick, that this ignition happens, probably cigarette or or a spark of electricity. There was static electricity was one one thought that it could be that it was there was enough charge in the air that it just spontaneously caught fire, like to to a like a rug or something that somebody had on them and then just. Whoosh, 
up in flames. But there's a difference between catching fire mm-hmm. and like literally exploding. Where you think yeah. if you're having a fag or an alcohol, yeah, and then even if you're asleep and you sat on fire somehow, like from a cigarette, um, yeah, you would like one. You would likely wake up before like the t- like, sort of fumes overcome you. Yep. So you wouldn't just stay sat in the bed or on the chair. There'd be evidence of like a fight or something, and surely mm-hmm. stuff like that. Because a lot of the cases, there's no evidence of like uh, something that's lit, it, like the the fuel that's needed Correct. to set a fire. Yeah. So if it's alcohol, then like surely that would come up in any sort of post mortem. Yeah, it's very strange. And I one of the one of the cases that I'll talk about as even more high strangeness surrounding the the fire. Um so yeah, it, it is it is a very and that, that's this is the whole mystery for me is that it essentially seems to happen fast enough that you can't do anything about it. And for it to Unless melt, you're already dead. Yeah, and if it's like melt bone, yeah, but not the chair you sat in, which seems to happen, then that's mad, well, isn't it? That's yeah. You can't be a fire because fire. We know how fire is spread. Mm. Surely, if you are a fire, then things around, especially in sort of in the past when there wasn't many sort of fire retardant stuff. <laughs> nowadays, if you learn up in flames. You think the whole house would go up? Uh-huh. And a lot of these are there is very extremely localized fires, like I say, just on the chair they're sat on. Nothing else seems to. It might TV or something that sort of that will be affected by high temperatures might melt, as has been the case in a couple of them. But no damage to the curtains or the polyester carpet that synonymous with like the seventies and eighties. So yeah, it, it's a it's a thing that really sort of interests me, um, and there's been about two hundred cited reports of spontaneous human combustion worldwide over a period of around the last three hundred years. So it's not that often, but not that many, but it's greater than zero. Yeah, yeah, it's greater than zero, and anything anything greater than zero is not good. It's spontaneous human bus combustion won't kill you, but there's no zero in it. It it may well happen. So um, the theory of spontaneous human cremation, as we'll call it, was first put forward in 1641. So there's reports of it going back, what, 400 years, pretty much, by a Danish doctor and mathematician called Thomas Bartholin in his historian... Anatomicorum rarorium. Yep. I've just put it again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can. <laughs> uh, it was um, a published article which catalogued strange medical phenomena to describe the death of an Italian knight called Polonus Vorstius. According to the author, the knight had enjoyed a few glasses of strong wine with his parents at his home in Milan when he burped fire and succumbed to the flames and died. That's an intense version of heartburn. Yeah, yeah. Jeez. And so how how you go from burping a fire to that taking over you and killing you, I don't know. But the wine may have some of the, the alcohol and the chemical reaction in the body with the alcohol potentially, which has been one of the the things put forward about the fact that the the high number of people who had like chronic alcoholism were um were affected slightly because their the makeup of their body was such that it it uh, propelled the the flames but mm-hmm. so yeah, i want to talk yeah, so oh, yeah, sorry. i've seen reports like that it like the sort of the some of the victims feel like a heat in like the chest or the stomach Mm-hmm. So I'm saying that it does start from the inside, but let's go to that to then just... Poof. Yeah. Mm. I have seen one report, and it was from a survivor, and it said it looked down, felt warm, and there was, like, fire, like a 
like a flame coming out of his like the bare area of the belly button. Jesus. <laughs> what so? What do, you, what do you even do? What do you even say? I, don't, I have no idea on that. What's, what's your major say? Yeah, um, I've just got flames coming out of my belly button. <laughs> I don't know how I'm on fire. I Is suppose that's ambulance the... or you're on the fire engine? The... <laughs> uh, both. <laughs> that's a good point. Good point. Drink some so... milk quick. <laughs> Roll around on the floor, you'll be fine. Um, so what I wanted to do was cover off a few cases. Because I think once we start talking about the cases, you'll see that some of them are not necessarily quite as um, obvious as the fact that this person was a drinker and a smoker. So I'll crack mm. straight on with a lady called Mary Reeser. Yes, the famous one. The famous one. And if you Google pictures of her, then you'll you'll see... <laughs> You only have to put in Mary Reese and spontaneous human combustion comes up in Google. So <laughs> that's never good to have your your fame defined by going up in flames. Um, so the death of Mary Reese more than 70 years ago continues to baffle people to this day. So it's July the 1st, 1951, and um, she was in her flat in St. Petersburg in Florida. And they found her in a pile of ashes, essentially. <laughs> Older lady, uh, the chair she'd been sitting in at the time of her death burned as well. But aside from a bit of soot and a few melted light switches, the rest of her home was essentially untouched. So that that is something that comes up time and time again with the spontaneous human cremation is, like we just mentioned, that the, a lot of it is essentially as though there's been no fire. So the question is, how had her body burned at such high enough temperature to be cremated without destroying the surrounding apartment? Apartment, sorry. Theories about it soon spread, um, and the FBI actually got involved in this particular case. Experts within the agency soon re- released a report about the death, including a simple explanation uh, surrounding her very odd demise. Um, many remained sceptical and a mystery of the cinder woman as she became lived on. So, on the morning of July the 2nd, so the following day, uh, Reese's landlady dropped by her apartment to deliver her a telegram. So, to anybody who's younger than 60, <laughs> a telegram was like an old bit of post, basically, like a text message that was sent wirelessly and people would just go and deliver it to you so the landlady knocked on the door but nobody answered Uh, according to the local paper tampa bay Times, she noticed that the knob was unusually hot okay so she called the police Uh, officers arrived and discovered a pile of ashes where reese's easy chair was used to be and within it they found the care uh, the chair's coil springs part of the lady's spine her left foot still donning a black silk slipper and her skull shrunken to the size of a cup can you imagine coming across sort of that scene i know what would you even say this is the days before like proper horror films have come out where you could probably imagine this on saw or something like that but I don't even know how you would cope with the aftermath of seeing that. But it gets weirder. It gets weirder. So reports at the time noted that the 67-year-old woman had been disintegrated by a blaze of white hot intensity. Now, that's not just a bloody cigarette burn fire, in my eyes. That's like a smouldery kind of thing with a cigarette, isn't it? But as I mentioned... For all the damage that was done to her body, the majority of the surrounding apartment remained intact. A nearby candle had melted into a puddle of wax. Kind of understand that. Plastic switch cover was warped and the top half of the room was covered in a thin layer of soot. But everything else seemingly untouched. 
Even the sheets on her bed just a few wee up feet even the sheets on Risa's bed just a few feet from the fire were still pure white. Which that in itself is quite weird. Uh, so since it typically requires several hours of steady temperatures at over 1400 degrees Fahrenheit for a body to be cremated, Mary Reese's case baffled authorities. So you would like to think that if you were on fire at 1400 degrees Fahrenheit for hours, that somebody might have seen you. Mm, because obviously we have cremation. And mm-hmm. bodies. So that's obviously in the controlled yep. kiln yep. or whatever, whatever they put, whatever they put bodies in. Yeah, like but a, to have it in a little, but to have it in like a little apartment. Mm-hmm. And I mean, the door handle was hot, which means there must be a lot of heat inside. And obviously, metal conducts heat, but for it to be that hot inside, you see by obviously the melting of other things. But then not to have fire damage. So it's weird. Other things apart from the body. Yeah. And then it gets weirder, if it's possible. So St. Petersburg police began their investigation, um, and they started receiving several strange tips from various sources. One person wrote, A ball of fire came through the open window and hit her. I saw it happen. Now that is weird. So like, some kind of orb or ball lightning or something came through the open window and hit her, and they claim to have seen it. Obviously, who knows? Who knows? That, Another, yeah, to me, that sounds a bit like, I want to get in on this. Yeah. I want to claim a bit of fame. Yeah. It kind of claims a bit of... um like an easy way out to I don't know what's happened let's just say some fireball came in (laughs) but who knows another claimed someone had murdered Mary Risa cremated her off site and returned her remains to the apartment to be found so I'm not Mm. really (sighs) that wouldn't explain your stuff in the apartment no no it's convenient thinking to Sort of yeah. come up with that. To... You can't just cremate a body, surely. You know I mean you would be seen somewhere? I don't know. So a month after her death, a police chief of St. Petersburg, J.R. Reichart, released a statement saying the mystery was the most unusual case that he'd seen during his almost 25 years of police work. And he decided to send a letter to the FBI writing, Dr. Mis- uh, Dear Mr. Hoover, the fire is too puzzling for the small town force to handle. And the FBI soon stepped in to solve the case. One of the popular theories then about her death was that she was purely just a victim of spontaneous human combustion. Um, which, as we've discussed, happens when a person just bursts into flames. Um, but they believe it's from a chemical reaction in the body without any apparent ignition of an external heat source. Uh, And though there have been accounts of alleged human combustion over the last 400 years, not all scientists are convinced. The FBI denied that Risa had died from spontaneous human combustion, reporting instead that her death was caused by something called the wick effect. And the wick effect occurs when a person's body fat feeds the fire for an extended period of time essentially a candle. So the FBI report said that the body becomes ignited from outside cause. Once the body starts to burn, there is enough fat to permit varying amounts of destruction to take place. Sometimes this destruction by burning will proceed to a degree which results in almost complete combustion of the body. Yeah, Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, you can get get on board with that a bit with the amount of sort of energy that fat has yep like you think about when you're cooking like bacon or something when the, you have it too high on the heat and the, the fact the bacon starts like spitting at you and yeah buffer you know, thinking like, yeah you have to turn the heat down because it got too hot suppose you had the but you have to be an extreme amount of I think. yeah so hold that thought 
about bacon. Ooh. Hold that thought. Don't allow me to, so I've got to think about bacon. <laughs> so according to Mary's son, who was a doctor, um, he had visited her just hours before her death. His mother planned to change into a nightgown, take two sleeping pills and smoke a cigarette before bed. FBI agents on the case believed that Reese had fallen asleep while smoking hot ash from a cigarette dropped onto a flammable nightgown, caught on fire. Perhaps because of the sleeping pills, ticks off one from earlier, that she died from smoke inhalation because she didn't know she was burning. And her body fat uh, reportedly weighed 170 pounds, then sustained the flames as they essentially cremated her. So that is, that's quite heavy for a woman, yeah. particularly. However, despite the FBI certainty about the events, some experts are still sceptical. Uh, Dr. Wilton Krogman, a physical anthropologist from the University of Pennsylvania, was a consultant on the case, and he said at the time, I cannot conceive of such complete cremation without more burning in the apartment. The fact that only Risa, her chair and the rug underneath it, burned in the blaze bewildered this uh, anthropologist, even after the FBI report was released. Um, alternate theories of lightning strikes, arson fueled by chemical accelerators, don't make much sense. Perhaps most puzzling of all to Krogman was the fact that Risa's shrunken skull was still there. In any fire hot enough to reduce a body to ashes, skull should have exploded according to this guy um yeah it's he put i regard it as the most amazing thing i've ever seen as i review it the short hairs on my neck bristle with vague fear nicely put were i living in the middle ages i'd mutter something about black magic so to this day it's still not fully been satisfied as to what happened to to mary so a, a point on these sleeping pills. I never took sleeping pills. I'm not totally sure how they work. So I thought they'd just put you to sleep rather than keep you. I think asleep. they they relax you enough that you you go into kind of a deep sleep. Surely, like being on fire. Because usually when people die in a fire, it's yep. the carbon dioxide yep. shuts the brain off so that they don't <laughs> obviously then feel themselves being burnt alive. Yeah, as well as you're unconscious. But if it's if you're just set on fire and before there's enough fumes to think you would. Yeah. The body not going to some sort of survival. You'd like to think so. Where it'd be like, fuck, something's happening. Fucking wake up. You'd like to think so, wouldn't you? But I don't know. I suppose that if you've taken this sleeping tablet, and back then probably the sleeping tablets are probably a little bit different to what they are now. Mm. Um True. Because you think back in the old days, they were putting cocaine in Coca-Cola. So who knows what they were doing back then with with your sleeping tablets. It's probably like ketamine or something like that. <laughs> That's quite off about it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> she burned to death, but she was loving life. Um, <laughs> sorry, I jest, I jest. Um, Rest in peace, maybe. Yeah, and it is such a dark subject that... I, I think this Mary one, and you only have to Google a picture of her and you'll just see a chair with a leg. Um, I don't know if we'd put that up on social media because it is quite a dark photo. In the, um, the, the picture is a recreation. It's not the actual. No, it is the actual photo. Is it? I thought they yeah. recreated it. No, I did no, not. No, I, no. Thought, I, I thought it was a recreation. That makes it even no. worse saying, okay, then. I thought they yeah. recreated the. No, like, there's all the proper photos. It. No, 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 no. Ah. So. We talked about bacon a minute ago, and I told you to hold that thought. So, um, I used to watch a program, like I mentioned, called QED. And back in the day, I even remember this episode weird. Um, there was a forensic scientist called John DeHaan. Um, he once watched this gruesome spectacle unfold in real time to a pig. So in 1998, that long ago, experiment was televised for the BBC. He wrapped a pig corpse in a blanket. I remember this specifically. They put a fucking pig. Like, I don't know if it was on. I'm trying to remember it specifically what, what it looked like. Like on a platform, essentially. 
wrapped it in a blanket, then lit the garment on fire with some petrol to put an accelerant on there. As this guy looked on, the animal's body fat liquefied, adding more fuel to the fire, literally. By the time he put out the flames a few hours later, the slow, intense burn had converted a large percentage of the pig's flesh and bones into ash. The rest of the room suffered minimal damage. Yet the pig's feet remained intact. This is consistent with spontaneous human combustion, leaving disembodied feet or hands behind, like we mentioned. Uh, extremities don't contain as much fat as the core of the body does, so they're less likely to go up in smoke when the wick effect occurs. Now, how does science account for the greasy stains that are left on walls and ceilings in other cases? Um, they could simply be residue that was produced when the victim's fatty tissues burned. So I remember this pig experiment, and I remember them setting this pig on fire. Specifically remember it, thinking, what the fuck am I watching? <laughs> um, and, yeah, and it it had a similar result. But I don't think it was conclusive, though, that that was as good, like, that wasn't, the definitive answer but it was i think it was good enough to to put most of it to bed literally but mm. there are other theories that it could be caused by a buildup of static electricity within the body or an external geomagnetic force um larry arnold like i talked about earlier he's an expert on the topic suggested that the phenomena is caused by some atomic particles called pyroton which interacts with the cells to create a micro explosion no evidence to support that whatsoever but that's his his theory on it um another british biologist uh, has a theory to say that the source of the enigmatic blazes is a condition called ketosis which anybody who does the Atkins diet will have heard of mm. ketosis, the ketosis. Uh, the human body produces small amounts of flammable substance, acetone. So when you do go, when your body goes into ketos ketosis, that's when you it starts burning its its own fat reserves mm. internally. So people who are on the Atkins diet, where they're not eating um, carbs. If your body doesn't get the carbs, it starts to use the body fats that you've got, which is why everybody starts losing weight. You do any when fasting as well. Yeah. Your body yeah. goes into ketosis. Exactly. And you can pee on a stick and it'll tell you if your body's in ketosis and stuff like that. I've done that. Um, <laughs> so this guy believes that when a person is ill, they may produce enough acetone in the body that there is a tiny spark perhaps due to static electricity that could cause a person to catch fire and burn. Um, another popular theory suggests that methane built up in the intestines might somehow ignite. Um, <laughs> I like that one. That's a, yeah, that's a good massive one. Massive fart. Yeah. Explosive fart. Better out than in. That's what I always <laughs> say. <laughs> I like Jim Carrey when he goes to the um, in Dumb and Dumber, when he goes to the, the girl's house and he farts with the, the lighter. <laughs> <laughs> it's good it's good uh but despite these scientific justifications some people maintain that cases of human combustion have no rational explanation so i don't think there is a definitive this is what's happened because i don't think anybody's been caught uh, happening to them um it's been like ball lightning where it's kind of then one of the things where some people are like oh yeah that's a thing but like, it's not <laughs> actually yeah i think I like, it's, lightning and if it's, it's not proven like there's no Thing. If people, people sort of think, oh, yeah, well, like, but it's not an actual, like, proven yeah. phenomena. It, isn't, it is still classed as paranormal. Yeah, it's mad. It's mad because if somebody says ball lightning to me, I'd be like, yeah, that's a thing. Mm. But I've never seen it. Oh. Um, So I was just going to run through a couple more cases, or just briefly, because like, the Mary uh, Risa one is is probably the most documented Mm. one and the most famous one because everybody's heard of it i think um there's quite a lot of cases in the uk which is quite weird uh oh, and in cool. ireland as well so i don't know if that plays a part um so we've got a news report 
um, from a place called Prussia Street in Ireland. Um, the walls of the front room of number 33 Prussia Street were covered in black, fat-laden smuts. This is from the 70s, so bear with me with the language. Plastic flowers on the table in the centre of the room had been reduced to liquid, a television with a melted screen sat 12 foot from the armchair containing ashen remains of Margaret Hogan. The pensioner's body had been burned almost to the point of complete destruction by fire. However, her surroundings were for the most part untouched. Seems to be a classic spontaneous Mm. human combustion case. Um, The guy that reported on this in March 28th, 1970, said that the lady had been reduced to a small pile of ashes and it was just two little ankles sticking out. (laughs) Imagine like, Nan, are you in? Open doors are two ankles are stood up. I I can see her feet looking through the letterbox. I can see her feet. She's still there. (laughs) Well, her feet, huh? (laughs) There had been evidence in the room of the most intense of heat. The television set was a blob in the corner, but there was very little evidence of fire. Uh, A bit of charring around where she was sitting. Um, She lived alone. She was 89, required a a great deal of looking after, which was often visited at her home by her neighbour. Neighbour called on her at about four o'clock. She washed her feet and hair before leaving her in the usual house, sitting up in the armchair by a fire. 9.30 9.30 the following morning, Mrs. Hogan's remains were discovered. So between 4 p.m. and 9 a.m. the next day, she had burnt to death. So what's that? That's I'm trying to work that out in my head. Eight hours plus seven, 50, uh, 17 hours, roughly. They said that damage caused to her body was extensive, so much so that a pathologist who carried out a post-mortem on the remains said they had never seen such a complete destruction of human tissue. Wow. Again, like, no... Are you, oh, sorry. The, the satin chair, it's like with the Mary Risa one. Mm-hmm. So I, how is the chair not being disintegrated? Unless it's a metal chair or something. Mm-hmm. Even then, the heat has got to be burning that. It should be enough to sort of melt metal it's mad apparently in this particular case there's no apparent clues as to what started fire she was found in, so in the room that was a five-sided room um there was a small coal fire that had been burning in the grate when the neighbor had left the house so however no connection could be found between this particular fire and the one that mrs hogan died Self-immolation was also ruled out. So self-immolation is you setting yourself on fire, um, which is a fucking horrific way to go, um, especially if you if you like Rage Against the Machine. The front of their album has got a monk that self-immolated himself, and it's just him in flames. And I can't believe that anybody would purposely do that and even if you did sort of intend to 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 to, to kill yourself that way like you still won't be able to just basically sit there and take it you'd still i think your body would automatically you wouldn't be sat in a chair and just let it burn you'd take all your willpower to, to yeah. do that and and this lady's 89 bear in mind um mm. they, basically they They were saying that um, nobody believed them at the time when they said that this case was spontaneous human combustion. Um, The editors at the time of the newspaper were very sceptical. They believed that she may have swallowed a cigarette. So, uh, uh, even so, like you, it so just, I mean, cigarette isn't like a body. Like a proper naked source of flame. No, it's not. Like as soon as it hit sort of liquid in your mouth or things, surely it would just extinguish anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's... They, they said, in theory, a spark from the fire that was in the room could have ignited their clothes. However, it was difficult to visualise such utter destruction of human tissue arising from a fire of this nature. 
Um, but it's even more difficult to conceive of such a fire reducing a body, bones included, to ashes and cinders without causing the rest of the room to go up in flames. So basically, her death was recorded as death by burning with a cause of the fire listed as unknown. Interestingly, mm. though, door-to-door Garda inquiries, so the, the police in Ireland, not published at a time, uncovered witnesses who reported seeing a ball of orange light near her window. Ah. It's not clear what this could have been. The idea of a lightning strike, or perhaps even ball lightning, was offered, though it may have been the glow of the light of the fire. But that's now two that we've just discussed, mm, out of the two that we have discussed, whereby something different appears to have been there as well. And just throwing something really, really random into the mix is yep. like a fireball or orange or type thing is a very common UFO yep. type. Or is this that going into people's houses as a form of like mutilation? possibly something it's possible it's poss- I possible relation there yeah and but you think these people back back in the 70s 80s and way before that when this seems to happen there was no internet so people couldn't check out shit on the internet going, what the f- what's this about and in my mind a lot of the time some of this becomes more believable because they're not influenced so mm. to have two separate stories one in 50, 1951, in and one in the 70s, 20 years apart, two different countries. What are the chances that the na- or the person who put forward this glowing orange one in this current one in Ireland had read 20 years ago in a newspaper in Pitts- well, Pittsburgh in Florida from 1951 of a woman and somebody else reporting that they saw like a flame going towards her? It- Nowadays, yeah, I could completely understand it. You just Google spontaneous human combustion, get a few stories up, and you can definitely pick. Like these two have got very similar um, LOs, really. Yeah, circumstances. So I find it, I find that that's what intrigues me about some of this stuff is that's before televisions like proper mainstream when you've got like two channels so you can only watch what's on the tv at that so if you ever missed the news report you'd never see it again do you know what I mean that's it's that kind of stuff that you'd it'd have to be a very weird set of circumstances for you to have been influenced by an outside source that that's what you saw unless that's their coping mechanism because they can't just believe that somebody has gone up in flames true so what about survivors of spontaneous human cremation yeah so (laughs) these are very few and far between as you can imagine because like you said who who do you really go to when you're on fire (laughs) through no fault of your own and no obvious cause. So mm. the only one that I've been able to track down is the anecdotal one that I spoke to you about earlier, whereby somebody looked down because they felt a burning sensation and they literally saw a flame coming out. And it's actually a story I'd heard years ago as well. Um, and it was just like, they described it as like a, not even just a flame, you know, like a blowtorch, hmm. that kind like of a, flame. Like a thin, long like a thin but powerful flame coming out of them. No explanation was given. They couldn't figure out what it was. But this person didn't obviously die because they reported it. But it's one of those ones. But they, these, they don't seem to have any kind of witnesses to it happening. It's hmm. like the armor crime scene. Mm. no witnesses no evidence no witnesses no evidence um apart from the fact that they believe that a lot of these people were big drinkers smokers elderly women um another another study concluded that they were 
likely to be a white woman um, from either Europe or North America. But I think these are just some of these fa- the famous ones. And surely there would be more cases if it was because someone was a, drunk, was a drinker, even a heavy drinker on the sport. I mean, that's a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And to surely there'd just be more cases. Yeah, you'd like to think so. You would like to think so. Um, there's even a case going back to um, so where we just talked about the fact that people um, were not influenced by the internet or whatever. There's a report going back to March the 2nd, 1773, where the remains of a woman, Mary Clues, a 52-year-old resident of Coventry, were found by a neighbour. Her legs were protruding from the ashes and were largely unharmed, though the rest of her body had been reduced to cinder. So it is taken that certain circumstances will lead up to the fact so there's um they reckon that there has to be a rip in the tissue like the body tissue to allow essentially the the fire to start melting the body fat and then it becomes like a wick again you know i mentioned about this tv program where they burnt the burnt the pig and whatnot this other this documentary qed um they stated that an armchair had been burnt to its springs um but they actually set like a the 70s 80s sofa on fire um and it showed little damage that was done to the chair even after burning it for six hours so who knows who knows um You'd think like that they a, could that, that experiment with the pig. You think they could do a similar one with like giving it loads of alcohol and see if they can sort of. <laughs> obviously, when it's dead already, yeah, obviously, and get get a pig drunk. Um, <laughs> like try and like that's one of the sort of most common or most sensible explanations for it. They could test. That. I'm sure there's yeah. enough interest to for someone to do that. So they they have done further tests with like a human sized sort of dummy, enveloped in flames, showed charring. Um, it does state that breathing at this point would be impossible for a victim. Lung membranes and much of the body would be seared, so basically you'd suffocate. Mm. Um, the vasovagal reflex resulting from the severity of this profound physiological assault would probably cause unconsciousness. If so, the true cause of death would correctly be described as um, like shock, technically, rather than spontaneous human combustion. You didn't die from being burnt alive. You died through the, the effects of it, having it on your body. Right. Um, but where, they, where they've done it, all the, the experiments, and I can send you a link to a very interesting article that I've been reading, that the tests that they've done with bodies in chairs are high high level of um, body fats and whatnot have all been able to replicate similar type sort of evidence. Extremity is still there, very localized fire. So Okay, okay. Yeah. So so some of the factors they ignored on some of these experiments that they were doing um, was the presence of hemoglobin-borne oxygen in the tissues and the fact that combust- a combusting body starts at 37 degrees and not room temperature, so, which is true because the body's warmer than um, room temperature, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but that seems to be a more impressive way because the body's actually warmer than than the temperature around it. Um but it does appear to have some kind of biological cause to it rather than anything too mysterious. But the thought of lightning balls or orange glowing balls appearing around the time, I don't know. I don't know. It adds that extra bit of... Ooh. It keeps that mystery ooh. going, doesn't it? So what do, what do you think? What, what are your thoughts? 
I mean, it it's it's a really interesting, really cool thing to talk about. Yeah, I'm quite surprised we hadn't done it before. Yeah, so I think we have talked about it briefly, but not sort of not not on the podcast uh, at least. Yeah. Um, I think I, when I started, I'm sure it was X Files, one of the earlier seasons. So I rewatched it like from the start over the past couple of years. And there's an episode, I think, on, like a couple of episodes that has spontaneous human combustion as like sort of the storyline. Obviously, getting the FBI involved, like in the, the Mary Reese case, you have the mm-hmm. FBI involved. Um, I mean, it's like whenever well, I'd like it to be a thing, just because I'm interested in weird shit but I also wouldn't want it to be a thing because it's a horrific <laughs> thing to to happen to just random people or like whatever rather than like seeing a ghost or like yeah. just randomly human combustion just I've seen a report on one of these um, cases I, I hadn't researched it for this episode but I believe it, this guy had left like his mum or whoever the victim and gone back. She was alive. Then about a quarter of an hour later, gone back and it had happened. Mm. Which adds even more mystery because how does a body completely cremate within 15 minutes? Yeah. If you want anybody to say, knowing like, about it. Eight hours to, to do it. Yeah. But this, these are the kind of things that could be, they're just sort of thrown into the mix as a, a kind of keeping a mystery alive. But yeah, it's always been I one. Know. Yeah, it's been one that has always puzzled me, and it just rears its like head every now and again. And I, I think about stuff like that weirdly. Um, and just fucking out, it's odd. And there's one not that like, long ago. Um, I was going to look it up for to this, but I forgot. I saw it was only like ten years ago or something. Yeah. And that might have been Ireland, you know. I think when you said Ireland before, I thought that's the one you're going to go. But it wasn't. It was only 10 years ago or something. So I've got one from 1982 um, as well. Uh, 1980. So I've got one in South Wales. got one in County Galway. Um, again, another Ireland one. Um North London. Seems to be a lot of UK ones, which I don't know if that's unsettling or not. Mm. Oh, oh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, Galway, 2010. Okay. Um, Interesting. I haven't got that one, yeah. Michael. Fla, Faith, Fiety. 76 year old man. The inquest yes. was told that the forensics experts were certain that a fire in the fireplace in the sitting room where the badly burnt body was found had not been the cause of the blaze. The killed the right. body was totally destroyed by fire. It had not spread, and the only minor damage in the sitting room was to the ceiling above him and the floor beneath him. There had been no trace of an accelerant such as petrol or alcohol, and nothing to suggest foul play. Huh. It's mad. That's strange. It is, but all the all the stories and all the report and these are reported cases as well. Where if there's like a sudden death, there's always like the police involved or always fire in this p- particular cases. So there's always reports of these. So when they happen, they're reported. Whereas you've got other weird experiences like ghosts and UFOs, where people don't necessarily report them. So there's a lot of unreported cases out there that are probably mind-blowing that we don't hear about. But these ones, because they've happened in people's houses and they're such extremely odd in the circumstances, they they all seem to make the news. What's really interesting about this one is the coroner, Dr. Kieran McLaughlin, he ruled it as spontaneous human combustion. Well. For, the, for which there is no adequate explanation. The daughter accepted the inquest findings, but added, unfortunately, it doesn't provide us any real explanation. Okay, now. So they've actually ruled it as spontaneous human combustion. That was only 13 years ago. That's insane. Huh. Interesting. 
It can't be Omicron that many Benedict. cases. I don't think we've spoken before about cases where like a ghost has been the cause of a in one of the American episodes that the ghost was the cause of the death of somebody on their like autopsy report. But to have a, like an unexplained phenomena as your mm. method of death is um Yeah, that'd be cool. That's that's how I wanna go. Or like Robert Taylor, the uh, Deckman Woods UFO incident where it's like the only uh, UFO case where basically the police investigated it and ruled it in an assault and that the, the ripping of his pants and where his injuries occurred were basically fit the story of what happened to him from the objects that came out of the UFO where he said he's dragged upwards oh, wow. and ripped the jeans. And when they obviously took, they took his clothes, they all do forensic stuff on it or whatever. I said that, yeah, it fits the story where he's been ripped upwards uh, damage is basically what he said. It's the evidence fits sort of the injuries and the damage to clothing that he said. That's that's what happened. Wow, that's mad. That's <laughs> yeah, so a case that was like officially investigated. You said that like, he could have obviously just been assaulted by someone, and obviously just uh, injury to the head made him think like it was that. But it yeah. still fits the sort of thing that he was dragged up, dragged upwards, which is yeah. weird. Yeah, dragged up to it's yeah, a bit of yeah, from a wedgy legs. style. Uh, like from the legs, okay, like feet upwards. Like oh, he's wow. dragged upwards Jeez. and ripped, ripped the pants in the, that way as if it had been. Okay, wow, drag, dragged That's upwards. That's weird. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> so ah. yeah, that is spontaneous human combustion or cremation. I like the term spontaneous human crema- cremation, which uh, Larry Arnold put forward because he like, said uh, it is a better way. It's like UFO, UAP, always changing the. Yeah. Oh, and it's now not unidentified aerial phenomena, it's now unidentified anomalous phenomena. So even within UAP, the change in the letters means. I think, yeah. it's, the, I think it's the American thing, acronyms. Yeah, I suppose it helps with FOIA requests and stuff like that. Yeah, well, I don't know what you're on about, mate. We ain't got anything like that. Let's change it every now and again. Cool. Mm. That was a, an interesting episode, Ash. And um, I'm going to be careful what I drink. Yeah, don't drink I don't, too I don't, much. I don't smoke, so I should be. No, I don't smoke. I don't really drink either, so. Mm. I just sit in the bedroom making podcasts. It's good, it's fun. So if I ever go up in flames, I'll try and make sure we're recording video at the time. (laughs) On social media. I'll stick it straight on TikTok. (laughs) Yeah, definitely, definitely. Cool. Well, thank you, Ash. That was great chat. Um, Interesting subject matter. Yeah, very, uh, very. If anybody's got any thoughts on spontaneous human combustion, cremation, let us know it. Yeah, and if you were equally freaked out in the 80s by Arthur C. Clarke and his World of Strange Mysteries and these kind of books that you read as a child that you knew you shouldn't, uh, but they, they've <laughs> negatively affected you as you grow up, let us know. Let us know. Nice cool. one. Catch you next time. Speak soon. Pursuit of the Paranormal with Ash and Greg.